Hello guys, what is up? It's King Christo here today with, with another video. Now today in this video we are going to be going over a $500 Xbox One X Killer PC Part Guide. Now, the PC Part Picker link will be in the description below if you're thinking of purchasing any of these parts. As well as the fact that the Discord link to my Discord server will be below if you want to suggest requirements for future PC build guides. Also guys, this PC build, a lot of people have been sitting there like, Okay, well, now that the Xbox One X is released, finally for the price point, there's a console that will be better than most PCs. But, honestly, I don't think that's the case here. I've put together this parts guide, and for gaming specifically, which is mostly all you'll do on a console, this PC will perform just as good, if not better, in most games, except for games that are specifically optimized for console, which is by the developers, obviously, so nobody can control that. As well as the fact that you'll be able to do all the um, basic things that a PC can do that a console can't, like, you know, browse the web and stuff like that. Now, also, a lot of people are like, okay, well, the new Xbox One X can play in 4K now. Um, some games, 60 FPS. Well, I'm telling you right now, this um, PC can also play in 4K, some games 60 FPS, as the graphics card is very similar spec to the one in the Xbox One X. So without further ado, let's get right into the build, guys. Now for our processor, I chose the Intel Pentium G4560. I chose this for multiple reasons. First of all, it is the king of price to performance right now since Ryzen 3 is not out yet. Um, because at only like $68, the normal price you can pick it up for, it has two cores hyper-threading, so that means it actually has four threads, and it runs at 3.5 gigahertz. So now I can already hear the console people screaming, Chris, the Xbox One X has eight cores. This is only a two-core, four-thread CPU, and therefore you're not going to be getting as good performance. Chris, you need to be having an eight-core CPU for it to be better than the Xbox One X in gaming. Well, let me tell you something. The Xbox One X uses about two of those cores for gaming. Why? Because gaming relies much more heavily on single-threaded performance than multi-threaded performance. This is mainly due to the fact that the Xbox One X has to use a lot of its cores running stuff like the operating system in the background instead of running the game. So overall, this processor is going to have less of a bottleneck of than the CPU used in the Xbox One X because it actually has a higher single-threaded um, frequency of 3.5 gigahertz instead of 2.1 gigahertz. I hope that made sense, but basically, in simple terms, this processor will have less of a bottleneck than the processor used in the Xbox One X. Also, I'd like to mention that I have actually seen some gameplay with this processor in 4K, and I will actually be leaving the link to that YouTube video down below, it's somebody else's YouTube video that they made, and this video is definitely capable of playing at 4K, um, 50 to 60 FPS in a lot of AAA titles. So that's another argument that a lot of Xbox One X people have uh, made is that it will play native 4K and whatnot, but you can do that with this PC just as fine as well. As far as our motherboard goes, for around $62 you can pick up the MSI B250M Pro VD. Now this motherboard has all the connections we're going to need, as well as the fact that it is micro ATX so it'll fit into cases that support anything that is equal to or greater than micro ATX form factor. Um, at the budget price that this motherboard is, I'd definitely say it's a good deal, and will fit right into our build. Now for $54 to $55, you can pick up 8GB of Viper RAM. This is actually red, so although it might not look the best aesthetically, you're not going to be seeing into this PC anyways. We'll get onto that later, a case does not have a window. Now also, this RAM is 8GB, meaning that you're not going to see any performance differences between anything more than 8GB when it comes to just gaming. It does run at 2400 MHz and has a cast latency of 15, so the specs are pretty good as well for the price. Um, not to mention this RAM does actually have heat spreaders, so you don't normally see thermal throttling at all in RAM anyways, but you're definitely not going to be seeing it with this RAM. Now as far as storage goes, I went with a Western Digital Blue 1TB. This is the same capacity that you get with the Xbox One X, so um, it is on par with it, meaning that it's good, as well as the fact that it does run at 7200 RPM and has 64 megabytes of cache, so it's not like you're going to be seeing any bad performance. This is, Western Digital definitely makes some of the most reliable drives, and so I don't see this thing failing at any time soon in the future. 
you can pick this hard drive up for $48. Okay guys, so for the graphics card, I know the moment you've all been waiting for, I chose the Asus RX 580 4GB, which you can actually pick up for $210 on sites like Direction and Supervis. Now, this graphics card, there's a reason that I chose the RX 580. Now, Microsoft did tell us that the graphics card in the Xbox One X is an RX series graphics card, which this RX 580 is also an RX series graphics card, as well as the fact that that RX series graphics card runs at 6.17 teraflops. Well, this graphics card also runs at 6.17 teraflops, meaning that the graphics card in this build is very, very, very similar performance to their graphics card in the build in the Xbox One X. Meaning all that, oh, you can play at 4K, uh, blah, blah, blah. This graphics card is going to be able to do just what the graphics card in the Xbox One X can. Now for our case, I chose the Rosewell SRM01. I chose this mainly because it's a very simplistic looking case. And for the price of only $30, it's definitely quite the steal. It fits into our budget perfectly because of that, as well as the fact that it does have enough front I.O. and whatnot and it would look fine in a living room environment or your bedroom or anything. It also supports all the space that we'd need to house all of our components inside of it. So now for our power supply, I chose the Corsair CX450. Now this is 450 watts, so it'll power our system without a problem, as well as the fact that this does have an 80 plus bronze certification, meaning it's not going to be taking too much power out of the wall that it doesn't need to take. Also, this is semi-modular, so for the price of $27, I definitely say this is currently the best deal on a power supply right now. And if your system uses less than 450 watts, I, I definitely recommend this power supply. Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed the build guide. Remember to comment, like, and subscribe. And also remember, this PC, I guarantee you, would perform just as well, if not better, in most, if not all, games in the Xbox One X. This is King Christo signing off, and peace out.